On today's episode of doing chemical recipes which I found on the internet, I will be teaching you how to make iron 3 oxide for thermite. Now iron 3 oxide can be made in a variety of ways, but because of my own personal preferences, I'll be teaching you how to make it using an electrolytic reaction. Thermite, uh, the thing which I'm going to be teaching you how to make today, I will not be testing it out though, that's a disclaimer. I'm kind of sick today and it's cold as hell outside, so I'd much rather not. So thermite is mainly used for welding. It's used to heat something very unlucky up to a very high temperature. Thermite, however, has another purpose, less obvious. So in today's construction of the godforsaken mixture of metals with metal salts, I'll be using iron oxide. But say you had some other rare metal which you cannot buy in a store, like vanadium, a salt of vanadium, and you need pure vanadium. A thermite reaction will do just this. So to begin the production of the funny brown powder using the power of insanity and wikihow, we'll be needing iron oxide, specifically the red type. The black type works as well, however my lobster calculator says it will be less effective. For this, wikihow says the science for this matter is to run the electricity through the water with an iron anode. This is much like the copper carbonate process, except the I anode is made out of iron this time. So I attach the battery and you can see that the solution has taken it on a yellowish, greenish color. That would be because the solution has iron 3 hydroxide and iron 2 hydroxide. So I would leave this thing on for a few hours, I'll leave it on for the school day and I'll return to it. It's gonna have quite a bit of iron hydroxide and iron carbon eight and all that kind of stuff dissolved inside of it by the end of that. So we left this thing on for a few hours. I left the potion to brew and uh... That's not the color it's supposed to be. As you can see, it's mostly orange, which is exactly what we need. However, at the bottom, there is a lot of green. So I managed to get enough for a good thermite reaction. Well, we could do a bit more, but this is enough. You see, I'll get a lot more iron hydroxide, iron carbonate, iron oxide from this reaction than if I was using copper instead of iron. This is as iron is far more reactive than copper. You'll get a lot more iron thermite. However, the copper thermite should be a lot more reactive because it has a lot more potential energy inside of the molecule. So that's kind of a cool thing to think about. It's the law of conservation of energy in practice. So over here in this cup, I got a lot of iron three hydroxide, the orange stuff, and a lot of iron two hydroxide, the green stuff at the bottom. But if you're not people of the internet, the train has not completely derailed. We have a solution out of this. Uh, we could pour this out on a plate and leave this to oxidize fully for a few days to let all of the iron 2 oxide, hydroxide, become iron 3 oxide. There is, however, another solution to this. We'll need to use an oxidizer to oxidize everything inside of it. Hydrogen peroxide will work quite well for it. So take a little bit of hydrogen peroxide and pour it inside. This should oxidize all of the green stuff. You see it's become a very deep shade of brown right now. That's because uh, the current kind of disturbed everything inside of it. Yeah, I'm afraid I need a slightly bigger volume, a slightly bigger cup for this. So just pour this brownish mixture. It only looks visually repulsive, it's only a rust. I'll pour all of it out. And I'll add quite a bit more hydrogen peroxide inside of it. I have no way of measuring the actual amount of iron to hydroxide inside of it right now. So we'll just pour quite a bit of hydrogen peroxide inside. And I'll stir it up. It's going to become a much more orangey color. Uh, much less brown soon. So this stuff, which is inside of it, it's actually iron hydroxide and iron oxide inside of it right now. Uh, both of which are actually insoluble. So if we wait for a bit, the whole iron hydroxide will actually sink up and the iron oxide will sink downwards. So there will be a layer of water in between, just like you saw with the cup. It is also incredibly concentrated in there, giving it such a color. 
For example, if it were a bit less concentrated, it would be this color. Yeah, this is exactly the type of substance which is on my profile picture right now. So I'll just pour this into the pan and I will get to boiling. Now, as this thing is nearly done boiling, I need to remind you that in the solution which I had, there was actually two types of molecules, actually more, but two main types of molecules. Iron oxides and iron hydroxides. So by boiling this, I will get I will be getting iron hydroxides and iron oxides mixed together. So I left this thing run and so all the water managed to boil off, and I got this small amount of iron oxide, iron three oxide, and a little bit of salt with which I which I used as the electrolyte. So let's scrape all of the iron off and let's see how much I managed to get. The iron oxide right now, which I have is extremely impure. So how I will choose to purify all of the salts and other stuff. I will pour the water, I'll pour a bit of water into this cup and dissolve everything which can be dissolved. Salts and other types of stuff. And then I will pass it through a filter. So all of the very insoluble iron oxide stuff will be left over here. There will be a quite a lot over here because most of the pieces were smaller. But all of the liquid will just pass through. So in the end, I didn't manage to get much. I got roughly this much iron oxide. It's definitely not much, but as you can see, it's quite pure. Uh, it's very uh, much oxidized. So I know that one of these bowls weighs 116 grams. So if I put this thing on right now, it weighs 120. Meaning that there is roughly four grams of iron three oxide inside of it. Now to make thermite, I will need 30% of that to be aluminum. So therefore I need roughly 1.3 grams of aluminum dust. So it doesn't get as much as I want, but this thing holds a lot of potential energy inside of it. Like thermite reactions heat up to a few thousand degrees, roughly. So I by no means managed to get much of it, but I did manage to get iron three oxide. Uh, if there are any iron two oxide pieces in this, after the reaction is done, just pour some more hydrogen peroxide inside of this and you'll be done with the process. Uh, to get a uh, thermite, you need to mix a third of this thing's weight in aluminum dust into the mixture. So, for example, this thing weighs 4 grams, uh, I will need 1.3 grams of aluminum dust for this. So, that is how you make iron 3 oxide within your household. Uh, to my greatest disappointment, I say I cannot be testing this thing out today. Again, as I feel worse than the iron anode right now, probably, and therefore we need to sit home for a while. Uh, tell me in the comment section, should I begin making videos every two weeks with slightly higher quality? Because I am slightly running out of chemical reactions to do. So tell me, do I keep uploading weekly or do I make a more high quality video every two weeks? Uh, Alright, yeah, that's how we make iron 3 oxide. That's it for this time. See ya.